Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be bringing you a little bit of a different video instead of working on the engine of a car or cleaning a car, doing enhancements to a car. I'm going to show you how to do some upholstery. I only bought two yards for this project and I'm actually thinking that I might have enough to do with the seat backs of this. Hoping the customer is going to like it well enough that he wants to continue. Uh, and I like to mark the back side uh, just so that there's nothing on the top side. And this is from Amazon and I'm pretty happy with the material. The white is very white. Um, which is what I ordered, um, but it's in, it's in good shape. We know that the board is 39, so it's going to be 39 inches wide <coughs> plus 32 because of the way that I want to make the band, and the band is what wraps around the side. I want the front to wrap around and down. Uh, but the sides will come around and meet up on the front edges. Uh, you'll see at the end of the video what I'm talking about. But um, so, so we're going to 39 inches plus 32. And if I don't have enough material, I'll just make the seam in the middle on the back. All right, 39 plus 32 is 71. So I don't have 71 inches here, so I'm going to divide that by two. And then we're going to be at, what is that, 30, 35 and a half inches. So I have two pieces, 35 and a half inches. And uh, I'll probably just actually cut that all the way across. And then I'm going to use that and then cut it where I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to flip this over and mark it. And so anytime you sew, it's going to be, you need to allow a half an inch for your seam. So it'll be over by half an inch. So if I need this to be a four inch band, I need at least four and a half inches. Plus I need what wraps around the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it at six inches. I'm going to cut two strips at six inches across. So we're going to go ahead and cut the top, which is also going to be the top and the front, and I'm going to go ahead and mark that out now. So I guess one thing I didn't do is I did not put a square on this side to make sure the cut was square. Um, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, cut's pretty square. Uh, so something that if you get into this you'll learn that upholstery you can it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, however, this is going to be 100% perfect. Uh, but yeah, the, the edges are good and uh, we can move forward from here. All right, so now I've got my materials. I've got the band, I've got the front and the, the top ready to go. So I'm gonna set this aside. And at this point, I'm going to roll up this material, I'm going to get rid of this contraption 
I'm going to get my sewing machine put in place and then we can start sewing. All right, so on this channel, I try to do everything that just anybody can do. Now I understand not everybody has a sewing machine uh, like this. So I have no excuse, but uh, I do have an industrial sewing machine. Uh, I just wanted to, to preface that I understand not everybody has a sewing machine in the corner of their garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the thread. I'm gonna put some white thread in and, um, and then we're gonna sew the band. And I'll explain all that as I go. So I am using a polyester thread, uh, which is more UV resistant. So it should last longer than a nylon, which I didn't realize until I was trying to find this thread on Amazon that that was um, something I needed to watch for. So if you're gonna do anything that's gonna be outdoor, polyester is the way you wanna go. Okay. All right, so we're good to go. I'm going to spray this work area with some spray silicone, and that's just gonna allow the work to move smoothly. And just a little bit. It's just like, kind of like the WD-40 thing, but it just makes things slicker and slightly easier. sewing you're going to keep your material face to face and then you're going to keep it about a half an inch in so the the needle will be roughly half an inch in from the edge so go ahead and turn the machine on This machine has reverse, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse, and that's a lock stitch, and that just, it, it goes forward, and then it goes backward just to lock the stitch in, so here we go. I'm going to lock it in at the bottom, so that's going to give us our first And then we can kind of take a look at what we got. You can see it's good and tight. Stitch all the way down, half an inch. And so I'm going to switch to blue because I want to go ahead and put a what we would call a French seam right here where it's blue on both sides. So on a French seam, what you do is you split this. So if you're just doing a top stitch, it'll be just like this. But if you're doing a French seam, it'll be like this. And you'll see the difference between a top stitch and a French seam by the end of the video. This side, or on this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have stitching here and stitching here. Um, on the top stitch, which will be on the main piece, it'll just be around the perimeter on one side. And one thing to consider is the first half inch is going to be hidden under the top piece. So we uh, don't really worry too much about the first couple stitches. Uh, we'll make sure that the lock stitch is up in that area. Okay, and here we go. And just go ahead and run the stitch all the way down. And then go 
it slowly. Just get a nice stitch, a nice clean stitch. All right, we're at the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and walk it in. And that's all there is to it. So again, we're gonna roll over the other side. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, in case you do have a sewing machine and you want to know, during the startup portion of this, I am holding both pieces, the bobbin and the top thread, and that just keeps the bobbin from getting wound up underneath. So that's why I have a hold of these. I let go. I'm going to go ahead and go reverse. And then here we go. I'm going to run down through. Here, we'll go ahead and lock it in. And but you can see that's a French seam. And the rest of this I'll go a little bit faster. So we have the band done. Um, if I haven't explained it well enough, you'll see here at the end what we end up doing. Um, so what I did is I, I put two pieces together for the band. And now what I'm going to do is mark the center of the top piece. And by doing that, I'm just folding it in half. And then I'm going to take my scissors and just cut what I would call dark and then you can see what that gives me here and that's just my center point so that's where I'm going to start my sewing um, another thing I need to do is make sure that where my corners are um, I don't think I really need to mark those Depending on which piece I start with, I'm going to go ahead and mark them anyway, just so I have a point of reference. So I'll bring you in on that, what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to start here in the center. So you can see the center line of my band is marked up with that center line. So I'm just going to come to the edge here and then I'm going to mark it right here. So I know that's where I need to turn. So the material's lined up here in the center. I'm gonna come over here and just make a mark and that way I know that's the corner. Um, I'll do the same on the other side. All right, so now I've marked, uh, the first mark I made was right on the corner and then it came back another half an inch. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and cut a dart at that second mark that I made. I don't know if you can see that one, uh, right here. So I'll be making a dart there. And it really doesn't have to be very big, it's just an indicator that that's where I need to turn. So. I've got that, and then on the bottom piece, piece that goes on the bottom here, I've marked it, and I need to I've marked it here. And so I need to dart that as well. So it's going to be the further mark in right here.
So now, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this, and I'm going to start in the center and work my way out. Um, it's just easier that way to make sure that everything's center. Uh, I'm just not super experienced at the, the, the sewing to make sure that I'm not stretching one material more than the other, which means the top or the bottom. So you'll see what I'm doing here. And we can start beyond center. And as you can tell, I don't have any reference marks as to what half an inch is. Uh, I'm just eyeballing. And I said earlier in the video that, you know, you don't have to be exactly perfect. So this is an example of that. So here we go. I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna work my way around and then I'll flip it over and I'll do the other side. And you always want to lock the stitch. So with this machine, I've got reverse. If you don't have reverse, you can lift and go back to where it started. And that's the same as locking the stitch. So I'm just going to back up a bit. And here we go. I'm just going to run down this edge here, trying to keep about a half an inch. And I'm trying not to pull. It's really easy to do as you're sewing. It's real easy to, to pull the top or the bottom, especially when you're doing a contour. Uh, but trying to keep it straight and And then when we get to the corner, that's where it's going to get a little tricky. Um, but here we are. You can see I've marked the corner. I'm right at the corner now. So I'm going to prepare for that. So as we get close, I'll just slow down the machine. And then I might turn it, turn it by hand. And I want to turn not on, on, on the mark that I made, which is a half an inch. And uh, I failed to mark that, actually. So here we are about half an inch in. I know that it's already looped because it went past the center and started to come up. So now I'm just going to lift the foot and I'm going to turn. And I might go ahead and put a stitch in just so it's not a 90 degree turn. So there we are. Should have left the needle in because when you leave the needle in, you can turn on that. Um, probably gonna have to go one more. All right, so the needle's down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to the rest of the 90. And here we are. I'm lined up right here. I'm just gonna continue to go. So I'm gonna go slowly and then straighten out this and get it back to a half an inch. next thing I'm looking for is my turn um, to make the band turn the other way. So what I'm going to do here is figure out what exactly I need to do. So I know this is way too long. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut off just so I have some room to, to think about this. So here, we should be turning. So 
So now we should be turning like this. The full 90 degrees right here. And I am a little bit over where we should have been, so I think if we run this straight down, we should be good. Spacing is dependent upon the person that's doing the stitching. I like to find a, a mechanical piece that I can use as a reference. Uh, so I'm using the side of the foot that's going to dictate uh, the width of the top stitch. So once you get a stitch or two in, back it up. And you just want to make sure that as you're going, you're pulling the material kind of tight. Uh, you don't want it to be super tight, but uh, you do want it to be tight just so it's got a nice finish.
I do plan on doing more automotive related upholstery videos. Thanks for watching. Standing.